Chapter 8 Trouble After Trouble Early the next morning, the boy woke to the still whitened world. Snowflakes tumbled down thickly. Easing himself down the steps beside the bed, he limped across to the kitchen where the familiar smells of breakfast welcomed him. Good morning, Zeb, the woman smiled. Sleep well? Good. We're snowed in for another day. The weatherman says it is the worst storm in ten years. I don't mind, the boy grinned. It's nice and warm in here. I love a snowstorm. Me too, the boy agreed. And when you're not too busy, maybe we can finish the Christmas story. Good! I've built the living room fire when you're ready to light it. Not too much to do on a day like this, so we'll just have fun. Now where were we? The woman asked as she joined him. The people had gotten out of Egypt to a land God had given them. God was waiting for something. That's right, the woman replied. God had led his children to the land called Canaan. It was the same land God had given to Abraham hundreds of years before, but now wicked people lived there. They worshipped a false god, Baal, which led them to do foul, evil things. Once again, some of God's people left him and began worshipping Baal. To punish them, God let enemies conquer and carry away his children. Each time they would be sorry for their disobedience and call on God to rescue them, and God would. But since their sorrow never lasted, they were punished over and over again. To help rescue the people when they strayed, God raised up leaders called judges. They were more like army generals than court judges. One, famous for his strength, was Samson. His greatest victory came after God's enemies had captured him and put out his eyes. One day, thousands gathered in a temple to worship their god, Dagon. Thousands more were on the roof. Drunk with wine, they sent for Samson to make fun of him. But when they finished, Samson braced himself between two central pillars. With a cry to God for strength, he pushed with all his might. Down came the roof, killing thousands of people, including blind Samson. Israel's last judge was Samuel. When Samuel grew old, all the elders of Israel came to him. You're old now, they said. Make us a king like all the other nations. Samuel answered, but you already have a king. God himself is your king. We want a king we can see, they demanded, a king like other countries have. Samuel did not like this, and he prayed to God. Listen to the people, God said. They haven't rejected you. They have rejected me. So Israel received a king named Saul. Saul was tall and handsome and looked like a king, but he soon turned away from God, so God left him. For Israel's next king, God chose a shepherd boy named David. David was the young man who killed the wicked giant Goliath with only a pebble and a sling and cut off Goliath's head with his own sword. David also wrote many songs to God that the Bible calls Psalms. God loved David in a very special way. The Bible calls him a man after God's own heart. When David died, his son Solomon became king. God loved Solomon too and gave him great wisdom. But as Solomon grew older, he began to forget God. He even offered burnt sacrifices to false gods and many of the Israelites followed his bad example. Then God sent men called prophets to try to win back the hearts of his people. If you do not turn from your evil ways, the prophets said, God will let other nations conquer you. Many nations were eager to do just that because the Israelites had some of the best land. Despite the prophets' warnings, God's children didn't obey, so he finally allowed them to be conquered. Their capital city, Jerusalem, was destroyed, and most of the people were taken away to be slaves in a place called Babylon. Everything looked hopeless for the Israelites. In God's eyes, however, there was still hope. For even in Babylon, a few people remembered God and prayed to him. One of these was a young nobleman named Daniel. He kept praying to God even when it was against the law. So they threw him into a den of hungry lions. Do you remember the surprise ending of that story? God shut the lions' mouths and they missed their dinner. Like Daniel, others remained faithful and God sent them a wonderful promise. 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Son of God was finally coming to rescue them, coming to be their Savior. But when would He come? How much longer would God's children have to wait for that first Christmas morning? Even the angels didn't know.